In this tutorial, we'll be teaching you about transfer functions and how to measure them. Why do we need transfer functions? The Hark Robot Audition software uses transfer functions to localize and separate the sounds in the robot's environment. But what is a transfer function? A transfer function is a model of how sound propagates through space. In practice, sound propagates differently depending on the environment. Here's an example. Let's say you speak across the room towards an array of microphones, possibly mounted on a robot. The sound captured from the microphones is not only the sound coming directly from your mouth, but also includes reflections from the ground or walls, for example. The transfer function describes how the environment affects the sound, and this is what we need to measure for use with HARC. Let's look at transfer functions in more depth. Let's assume that the microphone array is part of a linear time invariant system. In other words, we assume that the environment or microphone configuration does not change through time. If we call the sound source S and the recorded sound Y, then the recorded sound Y is defined as a transfer function convolved with the sound source. Now let's simplify this. Let's say that instead of a human talking, we take the most simple sound possible. This is called an impulse, a very loud, short sound in olden days approximated by a gunshot. Let's call this impulse delta. When we record an impulse, we get what we call an impulse response. Because of the effects of the transfer function or environment, it would look something like this. In fact, when we play the very basic impulse delta and record the impulse response, the recording is essentially the pure effect of the environment. In other words, the recorded impulse response actually is the transfer function. What that means is that to get the transfer function, all we need to do is record an impulse. The only problem is that impulses are so loud that most speakers aren't capable of playing them. Enter the time-stretched pulse, or TSP. The idea is, instead of playing an impulse, which contains all frequencies played at the same time, we stretch out the frequencies over time, resulting in what sounds like a downwards chirp. This is called the time-stretched pulse, or TSP, and it's something that speakers can play. The neat part is that convolving a TSP with its inverse gives us our desired impulse, delta. This definition is important for understanding later on, so please remember it. Now let's see how to obtain an impulse response from a TSP. The standard method is to play multiple TSPs and record them. Remember, the recording can be considered a convolution of the transfer function and the TSP. So how do we convert these TSP recordings into an impulse response? The simple answer is to use the HARC software HARC Tool 3, which does this conversion process for us. But how does it work? Well, first, it takes the average of the multiple TSPs. Then it convolves it with the inverse TSP. And this gives us our impulse response. But why does that work? Well, remember that the TSP recording is the convolution of the transfer function H and the TSP. When we convolve it with the inverse TSP, we obtain the basic impulse, delta. The impulse response is exactly the convolution between the transfer function and the impulse. Thus, we get H of T, the impulse response. In other words, we have obtained the transfer function for our microphone array. Now we'll go over how to use HARC to measure the transfer function. You'll need a loudspeaker to play the TSP, a microphone array, for example, on a robot to record it, ear protection because the TSP is still quite loud, and the recording software WIOS, which is part of the HARC software suite, which supports various recording devices such as ALSA or RASP. Any loudspeaker on a stand will work well.
typically it's at around the same height as your microphone array. Remember that we're recording the effect of the environment on your microphone array, so make sure it's in the same configuration as when you'll be localizing and separating sounds. Don't place it temporarily on a box, for example. This is the RASP recorder, one kind of recording device that you can use. In general, we play and record the TSP many times, 360 degrees around the microphone array. For every 5 or 10 degrees, you would place a loudspeaker and record the TSP. The first step is to mark the floor to make the placement of the speakers easier. You'll need two people, one to measure the angle and another to mark. In this example, we measure every 15 degrees around the microphone array and mark them. These will be our guide when moving the speaker every 5 degrees. Some masking tape and a felt marker are useful here. Here we're measuring angles using a laser measuring device, but you can do exactly the same thing with a string and a protractor. In the end, you should have measured many points around your microphone array. Now with these two people, assign a PC controller to control the playing and recording of the TSPs, and a second person to move the speaker after each TSP is played. The PC controller will use the software to record the TSPs. Please take note of where it saves the files. Later on, you'll need to tell HarkTool 3 where to fetch them. So here's what the recording looks like. 